I'm so excited for our next guest. He is a political strategist, an activist, a philanthropist, and a father of Hamilton creator Lin-Manuel Miranda. He's also a husband and a grandfather and mm. an overall very kind human being. He has a new book out. It's called Relentless, My Story of the Latino Spirit that is transforming America, in which he shares stories about his career in politics, his family values, and his upbringing in Puerto Rico. Please welcome Luis A. Miranda, Jr. Hello, sir. Thank you for having me here. It's wonderful to have you here. Yeah. We first have to start with your outfit, because you are dashing. <laughs> You've Stunning. brought back the brooch. Thank you. Yes. I see. Look at like my wife, the trend. but he matches. <laughs> My look. That's right. I love, love it. it. You're a trendsetter. It. Yeah. Thank You're bringing you. it Thank back. Thank you very much. Thank you yeah. very much. We love this book. Wonderful title, Relentless. For those who don't who don't know, uh, because you've been living under a rock, <laughs> you are the father <laughs> of two very talented children. Uh, one of them has had a little show, two little uh, shows on Broadway. Um, who's counting? I mean, you You're know. You're missing Bring It On. I, I could go on. Yeah. And, uh, and, and Brack Forever. Uh, yeah, music on some movies that might be familiar, you know. Yeah. yeah. What, is, what does he think of you going out and writing books? Uh, my children are very supportive of everything I do, uh, as I was very supportive of anything that they wanted to do and continue to mm -hmm. do. Uh, through life. Uh, my daughter and my son, they're very, very different. And then I have Miguel, who's mm -hmm. 23 years old. Uh, and my daughter is very factual. She's an engineer and an MBA. So she looked at the book for factual information. Uh oh, <laughs> she was and a fact checker. She was a fact checker. She will tell me. Uh, this really didn't happen in 1979. I it love really that. happened X. Wow. And she will remember, and she fact-checked. <laughs> uh, my son uh, gave me very different kind of advice. His advice was, you're still alive. Uh, we hope for you to be around for a very long time. And you say unkind things oh, wow. about people who are also alive. Oh, wow. Uh, so you have to make sure, as you go through the book, do I really want, on the record, that I am calling so and so ah. a very unkind thing? If you do, then be Great. my guest. And I did. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love you. that they're looking out for you because yeah. you've, always, you've yeah. always been looking out for them. Yes. I mean, is it true that you mortgaged your house to help with the funding of Hamilton? I, I did. Quite frankly, that was more personal than needed. Right. Once Hamilton occurred at the public theater, the way life goes, now I'm the board chair yeah. of the public theater, uh, it was very clear that Hamilton was going to move mm -hmm. uh, to Broadway. But my wife and I had seen so many different kinds of audiences react to Hamilton in such a positive way that we said to ourselves, this is probably our opportunity to stop living from paycheck to paycheck. Well, you right? said art is the door to opportunity. It, it really is. It really is. Uh, in the book, in Relentless, I, I talk a lot about uh, my uncle, uh, who is a great artist in Puerto Rico. And my family always criticized him mm -hmm. and felt that he needed a job. Mm. That gigging. Right. The uh, real job. A right. real yeah. job. And I grew up with that. Uh, so when, when, when Le Manuel uh, decided to go into this line of business, there's always a lot of trepidation. Uh, we, we, we quickly uh, realized that we, we knew this was his lane, but that it was the door to way more yeah. opportunities and opportunities that he has given right. mm -hmm. to so many BIPOC artists oh, yeah. to shine. In addition to reframing how we think about Broadway and who we cast mm -hmm. on Broadway, I mean, Apple Tree, hello. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so really. I was very transparent. I also went to Wesleyan. I saw In the Heights when it was his social, his uh, senior project. I know you were there with your family. You've been very involved. And in 30 friends. And 30 friends. So yeah, we, you were we, that whole section <laughs> of the 93. That's yeah. why I couldn't in get in. In fact, for the <laughs> opening, uh, it was snowing, and I was taking a bus from Washington Heights to Wesleyan. 
to see the show on opening night. So they had to Here wait you know. for a curtain until we got oh, there. Oh, I know, because I was there <laughs> opening night, and my homegirls were like, this kid, who everyone thinks is a star, his family is coming from New York, and their bus is, you know, <laughs> seven. So now I know it was you. Um, really quick, because I think this is interesting, and not a lot of people realize this. You studied psychology in Puerto Rico, which tracks, because, my gosh, you have your hands in so many different things. I, I, I did, and I actually thought that I will be a clinical psychologist and came to New York to the PhD program at NYU yeah. in clinical psychology and quickly learned that I wanted to have an impact differently. Yeah. It could not be one on one. However, it was not all lost. It was at that program that I met my wife of Aww. 46 years. <laughs> so I did not get a PhD in psychology, but I got a PhD, a PhD. For, <laughs> a a, for a wife. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I love that your family is so giving. I mean, you're, like you said, your son has launched mm -hmm. careers, but your you're philanthropic, philanthropic work, a giving until it hurts. Can you talk about that and what a yeah, difference it's you made? Know, I, I, I was trained, believe it or not, when we started the Hispanic Federation back in 1990 by the United Jewish Appeal Federation. Uh, they were a model, and we were created to begin to get dollars from a community that is very giving, the Latino community, but do it in an organized way for nonprofits that are helping uh, organizations throughout the country. And the phrase was, give until it hurts. Mm. If you couldn't, if you were able to buy that tie that you wanted, you didn't give enough because nobody really needs a tie. Like, <laughs> I've worn one in decades. Uh, but. So it's important that people realize that giving, it's part of your budget. Mm -hmm. The same yes. way you pay rent, the same way you have to help others in your community through organizations philanthropically. Unbelievable. That. Very quickly, tell us about your film at the Tribeca Festival, sir. Well. <laughs> I, 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 I have said that what I want to do next as I reinvent myself uh, until the moment I die, uh, it's documentaries. Uh, this very good friend of mine, John James, we call him JJ, uh, did a documentary about me that it's in HBO called Siempre uh, Luis. And through that, I have met him. And now I'm, I'm executive producer of Black Table uh, that... Uh, premieres now at Tribeca. Wow. wow. And Fantastic. tell us a little bit about it. It's uh, the largest Yale class of African-American students happened in 1997. Wow. And the symbol of the black table, it's the symbol of what happened to us when we go to institutions where we are a tiny minority. We create a posse and help each other. And that black table is the symbol of that posse. And the documentary tracks the lives of some of those students and the demise of affirmative action mm. by the dark mm. forces in this country. Uh, that was the highest. And we continue to see that as a bad Supreme Court uh, dismantles affirmative action, there is less mm. and less diversity wow. in our colleges. Well, we're going to have to go see this film, read your book, and just keep tabs on you. You're a busy man. You're just going to have to come back. Yeah. I'm so happy to come whenever you guys oh, want me. Thank I love you having so you much. here. So yeah. wonderful to meet you. Thank you.